Hi, everyone. It's me, Neil Brennan. This is the Blocks Podcast. My guest today is one of the few people whose uh, specials, I think I watched all of them. Hmm. I think I watched, are there three of them? There's three of them, yep. Yep, that, I did it. <laughs> I watched the Comedy Central one. That was seven years ago. Yep. Damn, yeah. Yep, and then and I watched the HBO one, the two HBO ones. Right. And uh, a joke of yours that I think about all the time. Well, Chris Rock told me to watch the first one. That's a good endorsement. And then um, you, the one that I think about all the time is Bluetooth. <laughs> um, throwback, yeah. You do, uh, Rel does a joke. Oh, my guess is Little Rel, everyone. Um, <laughs> Rel Howery, as he's known in movies, but, you know, Little Rel. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a, how old dudes wear Bluetooth headsets and think it's like some some Star Trek shit. Yeah, especially when it first came out. Like, it yeah. was just the way they would talk to him. He think he got to tell the Bluetooth to do stuff for it to work. <laughs> You know, I was just talking to somebody recently because people ask me, where do I get these characters from? All these characters are really my family, my uncles yeah, yeah. and all that. And I've just been able to, like, make them into something else for the bits. Like, he be on a, hello, Bluetooth, answer the phone. Hello, shut up. Shut up on the Bluetooth, hold on, other line, click over, Frank, yeah, Bluetooth, yeah, what you doing? But these are, like, real people. I'm well, able to that's what I love about your act is yeah. the observations are so, that, I, I'd seen old dudes wearing Bluetooth, and I used to do a joke just, like, conversationally. Like, why are these dudes, they won't take them out. <laughs> there was a point where dudes would not take out their Bluetooths. Mm -hmm. There's probably still, they were just excited. Like it was like they were talking to the CIA or something. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I love about your act is that you have these observations and then you are having a joy doing these characters. Yeah, I, it's just, it, well, that's what I love about stand up. You know, like Eddie Murphy, like the- yeah. It's like observe, like you could tell Eddie Murphy was like a little kid that was sitting there and just watching everything. Uh, the barbecue, yeah. Mom. The barbecue bit to me is the one that the way I construct, the way I do my sets is basically yeah. that storyteller. The whole and sixty thing. you think of as kind of like the barbecue. Yep. It, the great part about the barbecue is the thing everyone always forgets. So he does the bit, and then someone in the audience yells, "Do it again." Do this shit again. <laughs> you can hear it. It's no, you, everyone like ignores it. <laughs> Someone yells out, do the bit you just did again. <laughs> it's so good a bit. It's insane. Um, and it's also that bit is it jumps in time. Mm -hmm. He's like, talks about day before when he's talking about Gus's wife. Yep. Gus, remember when we were on the boat? <laughs> like, it's like, jumps. It's insane. It's like uh, Inception. So you moved out to LA 10 years ago? Yes. Yeah. When the Carmichael show started. Dude, so you lived in Chicago when Carmichael started? No, I was in New York. So oh, right. Oh, the, right. You were in the Friends of the People. People, yeah. Did a sketch series. So he's out there yep. shooting it. And then when Carmichael show got picked up, I came to LA. Did you think you would be. What did you think was going to happen? Uh, what? Like, did you think you were an actor in Chicago? Or are you just like, I'm funny? No, I, I always tied all of it together. You know what I'm saying? Like, I started acting when I was a kid. Like, I was in, like, all the plays. Oh, and got, all it, stuff. got it, got so it, got it. Stand up is what I started when I was 19. I just, it's weird with me because it's not like I've never overthought what the next thing is. Right. I just took whatever the next job is. Yeah. Like, stand up is it's always fine, there, yeah. but everything else, oh, I booked a sitcom. All right, cool. I moved yeah. to LA. I've never, like, forced it. If the money was there, is when I left. Yeah. Oh, you'd be like, all right, well, I should leave. Yeah. <laughs> Friends of the People got picked up. I was like, all right, I'm coming to New York. Friends of the People was a true TV sketch show, which had a great cast. It was great. They did great sketches, great cast. It was just one of the, it's just what gets popular and what doesn't is impossible to guess. That's why you can't even like, I look at it like a camp experience almost, because that's why I learned how to write. Um, and it was when you're doing a show with your friends, yeah. like I, I, it was one yeah. of the funnest things sure. I've ever experienced. That yeah. writer's room was so fun. I can only imagine. Yeah. And then you most suddenly were in Get Out. I'm T.S. motherfucking A. Bird Box. I was excited to see in Bird Box. I'm still excited about Bird Box just as a movie. Big <laughs> Bird Box fan. Not an amazing movie, kind of silly, but something about Bird Box hit me the right way. <laughs> what are you talking about? And it's fun to say, Bird Box. Bird Box. It's like Peacock. Peacock. On Peacock. I'm Peacock. Bird Box. Bird Box. Peacock. Peacock. So, uh, so, and then you were on uh, Gerard's sitcom, then you had your own sitcom. Mm -hmm. 
Rel. Here's what I know about you. I know that you've stopped drinking, which well, I'm no, always- wait, I huh? did for a while. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> for a long Hold while. Hold the papers, everyone. I did a reset right at the rail because I realized how like I was stress drinking. Like doing a sitcom is so hard. Like yeah, when you're starring yeah. in it and yep. producing it, it was yep. it was the most pressure I think I've ever felt. I think when we ended we when we ended real, that's when like Gerard, Josh Rabinowitz, and rest in peace, Kevin Barnett. It wasn't necessarily an intervention, but it was a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> like Gerard invited me to the Four Seasons. I thought we was going to brunch. Oh, great brunch! This is a fun but it, brunch. But it wasn't brunch. It was like in the room, like so. What's up? And then they just they was talking to me. They saw how stressed I was and what. Like they, it was a very honest conversation, and I right. I appreciate them to this day for that because I had to really sit and think about. Well, all right. What did what was the? I heard. I only heard that they called it an intervention. I'm kidding. Uh, no, I only <laughs> heard that you they like that you were drinking a lot and that you stopped. Yeah, I stopped. I had to stop. I had to stop and reset myself because I had to make sure I wasn't, I was stress drinking. I was just doing that shit. Like I was like leaving set because I was so stressed out. You it's know, having a TV show is the worst. Especially when you're trying to do it for everybody. I think like I was trying to impress black people around yeah. the country and making sure I'm doing all this stuff right. And I want to make sure I, it was a lot, man. And That's one of the great parts about being white. You don't, you're just doing it for yourself. <laughs> that is a great part. And once you, no, of course it is. And once you say I'm doing it for all white people, then it gets creepy. Jay-Z um, has said that one time, like, like especially being a black, you do feel like your community is on your back and you yeah. gotta, you gotta do it for everybody. Yeah. Which is really, which is really crazy that cause white people can't just be like, oh, yeah, yeah, just for me and my family. Yep, just me and <laughs> Bernie, my yeah, my daughter and and uh, wife. Um, and do you? Okay, so what? So it was stressful. Yeah, and you that was your that would get that would allow you to escape. Yeah, and then you know it's funny. So like I took a I think a year off. I took a whole year off. Didn't drink. And now like I specific. How was the year off? Uh, what was the difference? A lot. Like first I started like working out more and stuff. You, my skin got clear. <laughs> you have good skin. Oh, thank you. I, 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 work, I don't I agree with the, I don't agree with the letting mm -hmm. yourself go gray because I think you could play 15 years younger. Guess what? If they ask me, I, I this go, this is like what I like to wear in my regular life. Right. So when I'm playing characters, like most of the time, if you look at stuff, even the next four or five things that make, that's coming out, every, everything I look different in because I can't play younger and I can't cut this off and I do diet, but I like looking like this. I couldn't wait to look like an older black man. I've never understood that. I believe you've said that to me before, <laughs> and I never understood it. Please explain what the benefit of looking like an old dude is. Cause you, you I'm a, I, I'm a old soul, and so all the like people I looked up to is my dad and my uncles, and this, literally I look like when I was ten. This is how I wanted to look. Yeah, I look exactly how I imagined myself that I was gonna look as a grown up. <laughs> Damn it, that's funny. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah, I guess I know what you mean. I like looking wise. I like I like everything I do is very. It's a very specific thing. I look. I love looking like a dad. Yeah. yeah. How old's your oldest now? Fourteen. That's yeah. It's like that's. Is it a girl or a guy? Girl. My daughter's the oldest. And kid. is she like? How is that? It's so far, I've been doing like I've been touring, so I've been talking about her on stage a lot. But teenage girls, this is teenage girls. They, you know, they they're always irritated and. Yeah, uh, doing TikTok, and you can time. see when it's like you remember when she was like a sweet little girl, yep. and she it just became like. Well, she's starting to come back to that again, but she had a moment where she was kind of like, "I'm like, damn, I'm gonna leave you alone." But now she's like back hugging me again, and oh, that's you know we talk all the time. So, but yeah, it was a, it was a, her teenage. It was weird too when it happened because it was like sweet little girl to like sassy. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that, I, that's what that's what happens apparently. Yeah. And then they like hate you for eight years and then they're like, <laughs> then they have to ask you for money. That's what I've heard. But that's, that's I guess. I mean, that, they never stop asking. That's never stop. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but they think it's whatever. They understand that like now it's, per, they need to persuade you. Um, How many kids do you have? Three. And you been married once twice like, i've been married once i just got engaged on monday on monday and i heard it was at a beyonce concert, at beyonce concert. yeah where at the concert uh at our seats okay so it wasn't <laughs> like you didn't arrange it with beyonce to i kind of did so i called miss tina which is yeah beyonce's mom and it was, i was just asking which song would be a good song to propose to <laughs> Cause it's the Renaissance. I feel tour. like this is an abuse of power <laughs> in terms of abuse of access. In that you shouldn't be able to call 
Beyonce's mom and find out when you should. I, I'm happy you did it, but I, but I, it just from the outside. <laughs> One time, my sister called me. I know John Mayer a little bit, and my sister <laughs> called me. John Mayer plays with the Grateful Dead. My sister was going to see them at Wrigley Field, and my sister called me and said, "Hey, the ticket says eight. Can you?" Ask John what time they really go on. And I was like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to have to go and wait it out. Um, so what song did she suggest you do it? Love on Top. Okay. So I proposed, she, and she gave me specific instructions, like it's probably the best time to do it when Beyonce has the audience singing and you propose. <laughs> None of that happened like that because I had to go to the bathroom and the song started while I was peeing. And so I had to run back to the. It was a lot. It was covered a, in piss. Yep. I tri- <laughs> no, <laughs> but I had to. But you know, this forty three old piece. So you know. No. Yeah. So it, I had well, to. I could just stop dribbles. It. Yeah. Got to go. Yeah, got to like cover it. Yeah. I have a tip. I'll give you off the air about that. For real. Yeah. All right. Look. Pass the balls. If you like push against whatever's between your your perineum, your taint, if you will. If you just kind of like push that, it'll get the spurts out. Mm. a girl told me about it a long time ago <laughs> uh, oddly uh clearly i had a problem and she intervened and uh, it was a conversation and uh and wait how did she know what, did you have the bathroom door open no i she must was have just been pissing on myself meaning and she, it was a girlfriend and she was like hey you know you can like stop doing that like just dribbles after that. i'm cutting i'm gonna cut parts of this out <laughs> <laughs> um, but you, but just so you know, because it starts like in your thirties, where you you just slowly like don't have absolute command. I went to uh, a college football. I went to the, to see Colorado play. Oh, did you really? Great. Yeah, I went and they got the old stalls in the bathroom, like the ones like a big sink. Yeah. Oh, like Wrigley Field. Yeah. And yeah. so like, which I haven't seen in so long, which is the craziest yeah. thing. Everybody's looking up. Nobody's. nobody's oh, yeah. Looking. It's, it's, yeah. Because there's understood. no space. It's just nope. you standing yep. there. It's like, it's right open court. Into a tub. Into a tub. Everybody's yes. theater to the same tub. And it was so funny because you see the older, the older guys who just standing there. You could, <laughs> you could hear it. <laughs> you, you don't want to look. Yeah. But it, yeah, I don't know. yeah, that has fantastic. nothing to do with nothing. But it was like, wow, okay. I like that Colorado's gonna be like an HBCU now. When I tell you, I've never been to a college football game before. That was my first time. I've never high fived so many people. Fantastic, all the time. Like yeah. I'm like, we doing this after every yeah every, play. Yeah, like a three yards. <laughs> Great. Yeah, people That's I don't man. know. I my don't man know. Did that? It's so <laughs> it's so. Dion got to play. It was and everybody was there. Like it was like Wu Tang was there. Hilarious. Camp, it was it was a crazy group. Yeah, it is going to be Colorado. Yeah, it's going to be great. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So so the so you were drinking to escape, right? So then you stopped drinking for a year, and then when you reapproached drinking, what was the new uh, belief system? It was just now I drink specifically like just I do a Tito's and vodka, and if I do a shot, it's a Casamigo Reposado shot with an orange slice. So now I don't have any, I don't have the headaches no more because mm-hmm. I'm not just drinking a bunch of things. You yep. know what I'm yep. Um And then I don't drink at home. I got so much liquor in my house, but I do not like drinking in the house. So it's only when I'm out. So. And do you how do you drink every night? <sighs> I guess sometimes it depends. You know, especially in the comedy world. So like yeah. You're always at something. Yeah, it's we work at bars. Yeah, so yeah, no, like, cause I don't like drinking during my show. So if I'm performing, I don't drink during the show. Yeah, I don't drink it till like after the, the last show or whatever, uh, just cause I like to be clear. Which that actually yeah. helped too. When I stopped, I started creating my own like rules, because it was no rules before then. Yeah, I for just, drinking or just for performing, performing and drinking. Like I was yeah. drinking. I'll be. I have a drink on stage. Yeah, I remember the club in Chicago. They they made a drink for me called the What That Do, <laughs> based on one of my jokes. It's interesting. Like now, I, I can't. I don't want to have because I want to keep my energy up and I don't want to. Yeah, be you foggy. can control it a little. Yeah, bit. like you don't want to. I'd also rather think of something funny sober. Yep. Than drunk because I would give myself credit for it. Yeah. So just like oh, that was alcohol over at that. It's crazy because like I see some of my openers, you know that you'll see comics still using it as a crutch. Mm-hmm to like they can't perform which that's also an anxiety thing too i think people yeah of really course understand. but well do you have anxiety because i don't have a lot of anxiety so i don't really need to drink i used to but once i started going to therapy you know everything got better i started understanding what the anxiety okay. meant what were the main 
findings in therapy for you that you can talk about? A lot. Uh, it was me. At first, I for a long time didn't deal with my mom's death correctly. When did your mom die? In 09. Okay. And so I kind of just pushed through it. But when I started going to therapy, I didn't realize how many things were still just sitting there. Mm -hmm. that I'd never let out or never even dealt with or thought about. She died suddenly? It was just fast. Um, she was diagnosed with cancer that January, then died that June. And so it was just like a, it, yeah. it just was so, and I think for me, it was I was going through a guilt phase because it was hard for me to see her in the hospital. I only went maybe twice. Just because you didn't like going I to the hospital. Yeah. Not I like didn't like, but it was see incapable. Her like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it was too hard for me. And so, because that's, you know, I. I was still doing stand up and that was how I was making my money. So like I couldn't be sad all the time. Yeah. And so I made a choice where I, I kind of picked comedy over that and and I felt guilty about it. My mom, she wrote a journal um, when she was in the hospital and I remember one of the journal entries was like, you know, she wished I would come to the hospital more because she I'm the person she loves talking to. And so when you read something like that after yeah. somebody's gone, it was just a guilt trip for a long time yeah. for me. And so when I, I had, a, I was shooting a movie and I had a panic attack in my house before I went on set. And that was the day I made a decision to go to therapy. I, my assistant was there and I was like, yo, just send me some people. You ever had a panic attack before? No. Pretty wild. It was the crazy, I couldn't stop crying and I didn't know what the hell was going on with me. Yeah, could you breathe? Was it like? It was a lot. I can't even describe that shit. It was just like, I, cause I never experienced it. I couldn't even function. It feels like a movie sequence is happening. It feels like you're in a montage of like, the walls are closing in, Man. you can't breathe. You you can't think cause you're panicking cause you can't breathe. Those are the ones I've had at least. Yeah. I had them on stage. For real? Yeah. Like uh, while performing you had a yeah. panic attack. I had them the week leading up to three mics, and I was like, what the fuck? I've never had one in my life. Wow. Started having them on stage, and then now I take a beta blocker to go on stage, um, mm. which, and it's great. Um, but yeah, I, I'd never had one before in my life. It's insane. That's what made me go to therapy. I was like, I have to figure this out. And I haven't had a panic attack since then. Great. And did you know immediately this is emotional? Because sometimes people think it's like a heart attack or whatever. I, I knew it was emotional because it was too many thoughts. I was thinking about so, it was like a weird highlight reel of things that make me cry. <laughs> that was in my head and I started crying. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was it was crazy. It's what like, was in the montage? Like, you know, my mom's passing, yeah. my brother, like uh, them not being there. I wish they was in certain moments. It's, it was a lot. Was there anything like the Super Bowl shuffle? <laughs> no. It might have been uh, one last dance clip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how I played the game. Um, <laughs> yeah, but Steve Kerr getting punched in the face for some reason. No, no, no. Um, I'm going to tell you, so the last dance, dude, I watch it a lot. So I do yeah, tear up. Listen to me. The last dance is a touchstone for, I've, I've, I've watch it, I'll just be like, I just want to watch it. And then I know a lot. I know a lot of women that watch it that didn't even know mm -hmm. anything about it. My buddy Jimmy Carr, British comedian, uh, loved the last dance. He didn't know anything about the bowl. Didn't know anything about basketball. And he's like, I liked the story with Scott Pippen, which made me laugh. It's <laughs> the only person I ever called him Scott Pippen. Um, so, uh, so the the last dance is uh, like a touchstone for a lot of people. I as a Bulls fan, of course. being from Chicago, you re so you relive a lot of the stuff. And mm -hmm. then it was just watching Michael Jordan. Like the end of the episode where he's like talking about, he started crying, he's like, mm -hmm. break. Yeah, break. They said that was the first interview. That was the first thing they recorded was that. Was yeah. him doing all that and just going, like, break. look, if you don't want to play like that, don't play like that. Break. Break. Yeah. And everybody just said that, like, what you mean break? Like, he just, he just said break yeah. and got up. <laughs> <laughs> This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. The holidays are coming up. Go to therapy. Create some boundaries. Create some ways to deal with your parents or your brother or your aunt or whatever. Therapy will help you. I promise. I can't think of a podcast that talks about mental health more than this one. I'm a big proponent of therapy. So many modalities. So many ways to help you. It's good. I've never gone to a bad therapy session. Therapy's helped me so much. It's kind of insane. Yeah, like give yourself the gift of better help. This is the time of giving gifts. Give yourself 
better mental health. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. It's the season of giving, so give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash N-E-A-L today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Neil, N-E-A-L. BetterHelp. It's a great therapy service that I wish they had when I was a young man. BetterHelp. If you're listening to this podcast, you're probably in bad shape. Head on over there, chief. Tickets. Buying them stressful. It's stressful, and you shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. I used game time recently to see Queens of the Stone Age, and it was easy. I saw where it was going to be. I sat at the show. I texted Josh guest of the show during the show i wanted to buy tickets not uh freeload and i used game time to do it. it was a it was a it was a block special where i used the app to see the guest perfect who gets hurt nobody game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts it's the place to find last minute ticket deals i've gone to one eye find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football baseball basketball concerts comedy theater more my eyes back with zone deals you pick the section and game time picks the seats for big time savings i think i i'm crying from one of my eyes and the game time guarantee i gotta close it again and the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference i'm crying take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app Create an account. Use code BLOCKS for $20 off your first purchase. Some terms apply. They always do. Again, create an account and redeem code BLOCKS for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. And so your brother, your mom. Yeah. How long did it last? I don't know. Because I was late for set. And my assistant had to come to the house because like, everybody been trying to call Oh, so you, you were like immobile. I was sitting on my stick. I couldn't move. And I was just crying. Yeah. Nonstop. And I and that's she told me, like, you're having a panic attack. Yeah. And she helped me breathe or whatever. Because it was just like, I never, it drained me. I was so, I never, and literally that afternoon, I called the therapist. And we talked on the phone. And then our first session was probably like a few days after that. Great. And do you go... Uh, every Tuesday if I can. Well, mostly if I can. Yeah. Every Tuesday, yeah. Shout okay. out to Dr. Shamina. <laughs> of course. Did you specifically get a black therapist? Yep. Yep. It's important. <laughs> and a black woman. She be checking me, man. And I love it. Correct. She hold me. I, I remember like I had to like, I was like before I met my, my fiance now. Well, wow, fiance. Uh, my fiance now, uh, like it was a girl I was dating, but I kind of was just going to ghost her. And she wouldn't let me do that. You know, she's like, Rel, you're better The than therapist me. wouldn't yeah, let you go. she's like, Rel, talk to her. Tell her why. What? Can you say why? Why did I want to what break up with her? Yeah. It, it was the um, issue? It was a couple of things. I mean, one of the big things was it just didn't feel, you know, sometimes you could just feel like, you know, she, she was dope. And this is crazy. I met her through uh, a dating service. So I almost signed up for a dating service. So I put my name in the database. And then the lady actually contacted me because what, what they do is these are matchmakers. Yeah. So they'll meet separate people and they met like, a, she's like, I have four or five women I think you'll be perfect for. Would you mind going on a date with anybody? And so they interview you and talk to you and then they interview them and talk to them and you don't ever talk to each other. You meet at the restaurant that the matchmaker uh, pick out and me and her hit it off right away. We really did. It was like kind of crazy. You are an old dude. <laughs> I, everybody else using apps you're like well, let, let me call a number and get a, a matchmaker <laughs> <laughs> but i'm gonna tell you so it's a lot of really dope successful women that does the matchmaking thing it's very interesting is it like a millionaire ma is it one of the is there any sort of caveat it, it's expensive but is it for black people? No, it's or for everybody. It everybody. everybody. Okay. But you just could be specific about who you want to meet. You just tell them, like, you know, I'd, I'd rather date a black woman. I'd rather yeah. Do yeah. So, and they'll. That is cool them. if they're good at I mean, clearly, they're good at it. Yeah. And so once you met her, did we, you. We, did, we was good for a while. It was just like, I mean, one of the, I'm a man of faith, right? I'm, I'm a dude that loves God. I talk about God. That's what it is. And she was, I guess, at that time, I mean, just it just wasn't the same. 
we wasn't in line with frequency. that. Frequency. Yeah. And so I was like, that was a that was a big deal. And I don't know. Also, it was like, sometimes I didn't like the way she explained things. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go so on. like, it just, <laughs> it just was like, <laughs> it was just a no, Give like, you gotta, you gotta try to wait on somebody to tell you what they really want to tell you. And they get going through all these different spaces. You like, can we get to the point? Yeah. And I didn't like that. So that, and, I mean, that's And did tough. she change? No, I mean, she was saying she could, but I'm like, I don't want to do it. Like, I could, if I had a gut that it just wasn't it, I knew I was getting close to, I knew when I met her, like, oh, I'm getting closer to meeting the type of person, the type yeah. of exact type of woman I want. Cause then I got very specific about. Okay, so did she, is she the woman? No. Nah. Oh, so she, all right, so you moved on from her. I moved her. on, but she, my therapist wanted me to not just ghost her cause that's what I was gonna do. Got it. I'm just gonna disappear. And did you tell her you laid out? Did, how much did you tell her in the exit interview? The girl, I said a lot too. It was a, it was an interesting conversation. She was hurt, but she thanked me for being honest and not ghosting her. And I'm like, I did it, Doctor Shamina. She was checking and what? Me. Yeah, it's <laughs> she said, well, I. Rel, you you're better than that, Rel. That's hilarious. call her. I'm like, All right. okay. And then how'd you meet your wife or fiance? Oh, I met her at a screening. I was so. I actually showed up with two other girls. Fantastic. <laughs> so I'm hanging out with them, and uh, we were mutual friends with whose show it was. Uh, shout out to Megan Good. And I went and said something really nice about Megan because we was very proud of her on the mic. And I got off the stage, and she walked up to me, wifey, and was like, Yo, I love your heart. You have a good heart. And that was very sweet what you said. And it, it meant a lot to Megan. And I was like, hmm. Huh, how about you? Like, who are you? And she said that and she walked away and I just could not stop looking at her and I couldn't stop thinking about her. So I stalked Megan's page to find her, you know what I mean? And right. then I went down a rabbit hole of just who she is and um, and I was like, dang, how do I get her attention? Do she got a man? You know, I was looking, you know, yeah. you do all the research. She had four amazing daughters and it's just, it's just a great backstory. So what I did was I saw that her and her daughters were volunteering to feed the homeless and they was raising some money. So you pretended to be homeless. No, that's not what I did. <laughs> that would have been funny. So though. of course, just you. just me showing up with a blanket. Uh -huh. a real. Hello. <laughs> no, that's, that's so messed up. <laughs> no. All I, what I did was I pay like they had like whatever they needed left to like complete the fun, and I just did that. Great. And she hit me up, and she was like, "Wow, thank you for that. That was a big donation, and I appreciate it." Blah blah blah. And then we just started DMing and talking, and you know, it started with the text talking, and we started leaving voice memos. Great. Dude, shout out to voice memos. Voice memos, man. Fantastic. You gotta hear how they sound. Yep. It's very important. <laughs> it's very People's important. voices are very important. very important. And so then we did that. And then, uh, you know, we moved to the phone call. And our first real call was I was starting uh, Herald in a Purple Crayon. That's a movie I did. And um, she was like, well, before you start, can I call you and, and pray with you? And I was like, well, if we do that, let's pray together. And we've been that's what we've been since then. We've been together since then. Like I haven't not not talked to her since that day. All right, let's talk about prayer because I don't. We don't. Uh, God, it's Hollywood, so there's not a lot of God talk. Um, <laughs> but what's your understanding of God? I got a very deep understanding of God. First of all, like you know, I you grew. I grew up in the Baptist church, right? Mm -hmm. That's how I grew up. But when I started traveling the world. I realized that like not it's not one religion. I think that should be the prime thing. I think God. It's all the same. It's just I it's, say it's, it's like regional it's, brands. It's literally the same thing. And and you know because I think God is a big God. Like I just it's different cultures everywhere. So you can't just say you can't explain everything one way. Yeah. And so like because I once again I think all of us are praising and doing all that's the same thing. So uh, because of that, I just I just have this very wide. I, I respect and love God because I, I like, you know, what made me really like, I think about if I built something, right? If I created a world and I would just, I wouldn't control anything because I would want to see these creations I made, see yeah. how they function and do stuff. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times, cause you hear people say, well, if God, if God is real, so why God don't intervene and do this and do that? But I'm like, but if you created something and you want to see how it play out, I'm not going to Force my hand. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, you know what I mean? I think the, the greatest thing that we ever been blessed with is choices, you know? And so it's, it's on you what choice you make. Yeah. And I'm just like, um, I'm really thankful though. And I, my faith is what keeps me going and, and which even with the, with the therapist, I had to, I, I wanted to make sure, even though we don't 
talk like that, but she gets it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, so, but it's a big part of me. Like that's that's how I function, that's how I, I just see, and that's what I love about Danella, shout out to my fiance, is that we we have very deep conversations and I love that. Like we can go there, like we go into some crazy deep conversations. Yeah. Cause she know the Bible back and forth. And some things I dispute sometimes. I'm like, well, I mean, yeah. Hey, somebody else wrote this though. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, but I love that. Though. I love that we can go there and it's, nobody's offended. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, if you're talking, it's uh, the other thing is no one knows. So it's all just a guess based yeah. on even the, uh, what, you know, I, I was an atheist and now I'm not, but so I'm, I'm, I'm not dismissive of it. I just think it's incomprehensible. I think the whole thing's incomprehensible. N not like, and therefore I don't, I, yeah. I just, I feel like any, inkling people it's like I, I don't think it's understandable god has never said anything to me that um that was misguiding and if that was that's not god and that's why you got to be careful about all these like because people do invite so many things into them now. like the ancestors speak to me and it's like nah uh, yeah uh -huh. i'm good <laughs> it's too yeah. many it's too many conversations yeah the ancestors didn't were just weren't around till like six years ago yeah, people just started saying that. Yeah, they just, where, yeah, where a, were a, they before? Like, Yo, um, uh, okay, so therapy, you you dealt, so you dealt with the guilt around your mom. Yep. How did how did you square it? Um, what did you, what did you come to within yourself? Like well, you made the decision you had to make? Well, one of the great things that she taught me where it was okay to have, like it's okay to be angry and so all those feelings, I didn't think it was okay at first. Because yeah. you, you almost feel guilty about yeah. being mad. Like, well, that's what I would say neuroses is having a feeling about a feeling. Mm -hmm. So you have a feeling and you're like, but you shouldn't have that feeling and you're fuck it. Yep. Just have the feeling. She told me like, yeah, just own it, it's fine, it's, it's normal. And- uh, You were mad that your mother was well, sick, got sick and died. Man, and you know what's funny? I remember I did a bit on this, the last HBO special when I talked about therapy and I, I brought up one of the questions she asked. She's like, do you think the wrong parent died? And that was a really honest conversation I had to have with myself. I remember being mad at her, like, why you ask me something? Yeah. I remember cursing at her, like, what the fuck you asked me? Like, that was yeah. a real thing. Yeah. And she was like, no, do you think the wrong parent died? And I had to be very honest with myself. That didn't mean I didn't love my dad. I don't love my dad. Right. Just love your mom more. More. I mean, honestly. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so, yeah, I I do. And I was very honest. And then I started having that conversation with myself. But then it also became a conversation I started having about my dad and understanding him a lot more. And it's been, I I, I don't know if it's because I'm a comic, maybe. I love therapy. I love the, the direction therapy takes. It's just right. It's interesting. Of thoughts I've never thought to yeah. have. And I'm like, wow, that's deep. I've never You're thought. allowed to think unpopular shit. Yep. You're allowed to like what would be bombing <laughs> anywhere else <laughs> or or a thing where you're not supposed to say that or you're not allowed mm -hmm. to say it or whatever. Like they're starting from a place of like Sigmund Freud who like was basically like, hey, you want to fuck your mom? You're like, yo, so he's already bombing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go in and like say whatever you want and yeah. it's acceptable. Yeah. So what's your, what have you found out about yourself? Well, a couple of things. First of all, it's made me have better relationships with a lot of my homies, my homeboys, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and having really honest conversations with them. That was a thing that exposed too. like, well, like, like if I thought somebody was doing something wrong, it was a time I really wouldn't say much because it'd be it's kind of like a Were man. you pissed at Gerard and everybody for for the conversation? No. Nah. Okay. So I was, you were, I, you I, were cool. I was mad at first. Cause the, you didn't get brunch. But <laughs> <laughs> but you were you were you were mad at first because like, I was just mad because they were stepping at me. Yeah. I didn't yeah. like that shit. Now so the beginning of the conversation was us like me kind of almost squaring up with them. <laughs> Like yo, what the fuck y'all call me? That would have been for? the greatest intervention where he knocked them all out. Yeah, was about, but I was I was in that. But then it was just like Gerard is so it's because Gerard is from the south, so he kind of like bucked up back. Like Josh and Kevin kind of like oh shit. Yeah. But Gerard was like no fuck that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and and it was out of love. I've never had nobody be that honest with me before. And it went from me being angry to like all of us hugging. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And me thanking them for having my back. I mean, one of the greatest things they said in that conversation, like, real, we don't care about like these deals and all this other shit. We we want to make sure you're okay, man. Yeah. 
fuck this Hollywood and it, shit. It was believable. It was it was real. And I yeah. was like, damn, all right, they they being honest with me. Okay, so and then now you feel like you've been able to start doing that with people? Yeah. More I, often? Well I've it was weird because I've done it with them before, you know, you know, because I'm the oldest too. So like a lot that's what's another that big brother thing, like who the little brother's talking to? Yeah. Yeah. For you know sure. what I'm saying? Like who the yeah. fuck y'all talking? I'm the I'm yeah. the I'm the OG. Yeah. Who you talking to? Yeah. And so, but what I've learned, even from just therapy, it's just like one of my good friends lost his daughter last year. And, you know, I remember him calling me about it. And it, it, I mean, all of our kids are like each other's kids. So it's just a tough thing for everybody, but it's his kids. So it's even tougher, you know what I'm saying? And I remember leaving the therapy, my whole therapy session was about talking to him. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? I've, you, dude, I've written like, notes before i've called people mm. like talking points yeah from kind of from therapy like what do i need to communicate and then yeah going from there and that's what i did as soon as i got in the car and i called him the first thing i told him was like man look it's okay not to be okay first of all mm -hmm. i know you've shown all this extra strong shit and that's just weird man yeah you lost your daughter so you walk around like with your shirt off i'm kidding uh -oh. I mean, basically, <laughs> shit. Yeah, like it, it's like it, yeah. it is that actually, yeah. like some He-Man shit. Yeah. It's not normal. Yeah. And so I start, and I remember him being on the phone with me and thanking me for that. Yeah. He's like, because nobody has said that shit. Yeah. And he just started crying. I'm like, yes, yeah, your baby, my, my like fam, like you know what I'm saying. And so like I've, I've, I think that's what I've enjoyed. I think even now I'm a better comic. I'm a happier comedian. Like I'm not. It's not out of this place of just anxiety and sadness yeah, and yeah, all this yeah, other yeah, shit yeah. and anxiousness yeah. whatever the fuck like I was on stage last night or not last night a couple of nights ago and I liked to the fact that I could stand up there and put my hand in my pocket and just chill I like, know what you mean I'm not in no rush yeah yeah with my thoughts yeah and you can it's you're comfortable and they're fine and the audience is fine with you right they're I know like, so you. many great comedians who are afraid of pausing because they don't want someone to yell mm. some shit out like some of the best comedians in the world are kind of like conditioned to that that pace because they're just they don't want it any kind of dull moment well that's what's funny when you watch a comic that has to pace the whole time well it's like watching a tent like play it's like they're playing tennis right yeah they have to do that shit and once again uh, and honestly i've been there before right I, like but like i love how at peace i am i could do an hour and still kill it but at my own i ain't in no rush it is funny because there are pacers but then there's also like daniel tosh wouldn't move he wouldn't move the mic stand mm. and is crushing and like a little little devil standing behind just like, eh, and just wouldn't move at all and would crush just as hard as anybody so it doesn't it it is uh a lot of people say it's like perform Eddie Murphy told Chris to move like that because he said, if you don't move, the audience can stop looking at you. They can look away and they know where you're going to be. So he, that's why Eddie Pace, that's why Chris Pace is like, I'm not, obviously there's some of the best ever are Pacers, but I'm, but, but I know what you mean. Yeah. I mean, like if you could sit, I mean, that's one of the things I love about Gerard's special. I like how he just kind of set in it. At some point you could see him thinking like, you know, it, it, I was like, wow, that's that's yeah. so cool. I mean, Ali Sadiq is somebody I like a lot too that does the same thing. Stand up is such an interesting thing when you do start working on yourself, you know, because our lifestyle is so weird. It's such it's a it's a lifestyle where everything could be bad. Like you get all the temptations. You talk about everything, right. like every every like everything. And so once you don't let that control you anymore, you're like, all right, this is what I love to do. Like I love watching like somebody I like watching like I've seen you come to a comedy club a couple of times. And there's only certain people I see do it. They look like they just coming in to do their their stuff and they, they get, kind of getting the fuck out. Like yeah. they're not. I remember it was a time I couldn't leave the comedy club. I didn't know what my life was 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 without this shit. What did you do during COVID? Man, because uh, <laughs> that was the time when everybody had to like, what am I gonna do to all like well, from? I did a lot of six to midnight. I was on that Peloton. I worked out a lot actually. I was boxing and shit. It was crazy. That's that's when I really was like. Cause I, and then I didn't have no real schedule. I didn't know what, I remember, I didn't know what time anything was. <laughs> Until they started showing the last dance. That's hilarious. 
is what I said. Oh, I gotta yeah. figure out what time it is so I can yeah. watch this every Sunday. Yeah. Like literally on Sundays for the last dance, I had made crab leg. I had crab leg Sundays for the last dance. It was like my whole. It's so your crazy. Whole, it was your whole identity. That's all. It was like the. It was the only thing that the world was like. Yeah. Go, it was crazy. It was one that I felt like I was watching with everybody. Yeah. I got it before it came out. One of the greatest things that ever happened in my whole life. I had it for a month. Wow. But it was amazing. And I have another one that I can't talk about yet mm. um, now that is outstanding. Is it a sports? Uh, no. That's all I'm going to say about it. Um, Damn. Okay, so let's talk about what what the other parts that you've learned about in therapy, which is so now you you can be more confident, uh, more well. It sounds like you're almost like a emotion counselor for for other guys that aren't in therapy. Well, this thing about I am, but at the same time, still like because once again that you know my mom is one section and my brother and family and work. Uh, I remember one session was me having a conversation with little me, mm-hmm. do and dealing with um, the way I see myself. Right. And it was crazy because I remember one of those sessions was like, she would hear me say, like, I'll be like, I don't know why these like like these women like me or why I get all this attention and all this other stuff. And she'd be like, Why are you always questioning that? Like, who do you think you are? And I like all I had to go all the way back to like when I was a kid and I made a decision, like, I remember it was a girl it's a true it was a girl I liked in like sixth grade. And me and my best friend Gus, you know, back in the day, you do, you do the phone call, the three way, like one person is yep. quiet. And I had him call this girl I like to see, you know, take her temperature. And I was just listening. And in that call, when he was trying to ask for me, she was asking, she wanted to talk to him. Yeah. And that crushed me. Yeah. But it also was just like, damn, man, like, am I always, oh, I'm going to be, I got to be extra funny. I got to mm-hmm. be extra, I'd never be like just a good looking guy yeah. that the girl pick or whatever. Or the cool guy. So I had to be very entertaining. That's why I thought about this as I was a little kid. And so then I went, I had a mindset for long. I couldn't take a compliment. So like if somebody said, oh, you're handsome. I'm like, all right, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I couldn't take, because I already made a decision. Yeah, you were convinced. Years ago, that, yeah. like this is just what it is. Like, no, we decided that on the party line, on the freeway. I'm not. I'm not. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm funny and I'm that. Yeah. You know, and so I couldn't take certain compliments because I already made that decision. And we really dove into that. And at some point, I remember like, she was like, well, I want you to talk to, talk to you and tell oh, you who you are now. And it was a conversation. You're like, first of all, I look old as fuck. <laughs> no, first of all, I look great. <laughs> I look exactly how I thought I was gonna look. That's like our last we planned. <laughs> I look exact, but that honestly, I had to say that. Like, hey, you turned out to be, you turned out to be the cool kid. Like, you know, the kids you thought you couldn't yeah. be, you actually became the cool person. Like, right. you actually, that's who you are now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, every character you ever liked, like yeah. from Dwayne. Like, my style is literally Dwayne Wayne and Hilarious. making Mitch. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> That's exactly how I dress. And so, you know, but I became everything I wanted to be. And I, that was just a great moment for me because it gave me confidence and it let me be able to take compliments again. Because I could even take sometimes if I have a great set and get off stage and people, oh, man, you killed. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever, man. Yeah. It's okay. Like, I couldn't even acknowledge that. Yeah. I know what you mean. Because you're, conv- it almost feels like I, I don't. I'm telling myself a story to get out of here. Yeah, like don't fuck up the story I'm telling myself. Yeah, and you, and by the way, and it's you don't lose your sense of humor. You don't go like I'm not now that I am a little proud of myself. I'm not. It's like you're still observe people. Yep, and you'll still do extrapolations from the observation and figure out bits around them, whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's that's great. How long ago was that? <sighs> Might have been like last year. Yeah, a year ago. Okay. Maybe and, a little over a year ago. And where are you with parenting? Like, did you, relative to the way job your parents did, and then did you ever go through like the, you weren't happy with them? And then that's more of a white thing. Um, white people, we turn on our parents at a certain yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. I love my parents. Actually. I think they were <laughs> extremely dope. I think they did a great job. Um, you know, I think the thing I explored in therapy was like humanizing them. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they did the dope. And, and it made me understand my parents. When me and my brother were talking about this, like, yo, they were really good partners. They stayed together? The whole time, yeah. Great. Uh, they partnered well, you know? Yeah. And I, I think that's 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 impressive to me because it's hard to partner. Like, nowadays it's crazy. Everybody kind of want to do their own thing. But, like, they, they were full-blown partners. Yeah. As you were saying this, I remember the bit you did 
in the last one about your f- older friends dating young girls. Yeah. <laughs> but how have you grown as a partner? Man, oh, in so many ways. I mean, so I I can say this, like me and my ex-wife are friends, right, at this point. Cause we had a very honest conversation like a couple of years ago, like really honest. And it was something I learned in therapy, you know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, well, you know, it's things I never thought about from her perspective and vice versa. And I think we're better co-parents because of that. You know what I mean? Like, and I got I got a six year old who's not with my ex wife, which you know that's a whole nother therapy session. That <laughs> that was always tough because you know you're dealing with somebody that was extra marital. No, it was just single and. Oh, hurt. you okay? So you I was you going got, through. I was going. You broke up with the, your, yeah, it was, your first your wife, and yeah. then you were single and you got somebody pregnant. Yeah, that's that happened. That yeah. and that was tough because it was with somebody I was friends with. It wasn't like some new. It was somebody like literally I was really close with for years. She was, yeah. used to be one of my best friends. I don't know. We we got a beautiful son together. Yeah. And, and, but it's like a lot of my therapy sessions is her because she she puts me through the ringer sometimes. But got it, got it, got it, got it. Good. It is well, what it is. Okay, so now with your what do you aspire to be as a partner and where do you fall short? I aspire to be someone who listens, right? Um give space and especially for you know dating a black woman you they want you know, i want her to feel protected you know what i'm saying so that's very important to me well i will see where do i where i fall short at uh because all of us got something that ain't fucking perfect um i think the comedian in me could be so mean you know what i mean like we yeah. kind of mean like most, yeah like comics like if you when i'm on my group text with my like we're saying some of the craziest it's war, shit. It's war crimes. It's, it is insane. Like they're kick us out you of Hollywood. You also said the, the funniest fucking thing <laughs> at Montreal. There was a party or something and you go, Neil, you know where the party is? And I was like, I don't know, man. It's like, and he goes, and you go, uh, man, you and Dave are such dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Or you go, you're such fucking assholes. And it was so funny because I felt like the old dude. It just, I, it's like, dude, bro, I've been going to parties since 1992 in comedy. Like that, but it was when you were kind of lumped me and Davis dicks together, it fucking gave me endless joy. I can't, in a way, I can't even explain. Cause it was like, yeah, I don't like that. Ah. Um, but yeah, we're all. Somebody was, I was talking to somebody last night and she was kind of insulting me a little bit. And I wanted to go like, you know, if we start this, I will, I will say, I said to somebody last year, right. I go, when I tell you, I had to tell my girl, we had, I remember we, we had a session like that. Uh-huh. I was warning her. I said, stop fucking talking shit with me. When I do this, it's a switch. I'm a, I'm going to go. I'm not going to remember what the fuck I said. I'm going to yeah. say crazy shit. Yeah. I said to somebody, Hey, if you insult me one more time, I'm going to say the meanest thing <laughs> anyone's ever said to you. And I don't even know what it is yet. <laughs> Just know that I'm capable of the mean, and it's it'll be structured. <laughs> it's it's going to be airtight, structured, and you're never going to forget it. You're going to think about it on your last day on earth. I don't even know what it is. And it wasn't even, it was somebody I liked, but it was just like, stop it. Stop it. I'm like, like I, I don't remember what she called it because she let it, she, she wouldn't stop and I had to do it. And you just wrote it down on paper, slipped it to her. No, she I just fucking tear. went the fuck in because she was trying to talk <laughs> shit. And thought, I'm like, I'm like, Bay, I'm the wrong one to do this with now. Yeah. And when I did it, she was just like, she couldn't stop. She was started crying and shit. And I'm like, I told you, I don't give a fuck. Like this is this is a part of what I, I like a part of my weird superpower too. Yeah. You know, and you just unleashed the shit. I didn't want to put this shit on you. You, everybody else, whatever. A heck yeah. of a coup. Not the person I love, but you yeah. fucking with me. I told you to stop. Yeah. And uh, she she has never, she learned, and I remember her telling, she's like, real, one thing I learned, I said, nah, I ain't gonna fuck with him like that no more. Because everybody be talking shit. Like, you just, you're around okay shit talkers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like your girl, the, yeah, friend, the yeah, funniest yeah. person in the world. I, I know some of the, like, when we was doing Friends of the People, I remember one time, like, the production, they like, are you guys friends? Because we, we would give each other shit so, the shit we would say was so cr- absurdly mean. Yeah. yeah, they're like, "Are you guys even friends?" Y'all say something to yeah. me, and we'll be laughing at the shit. Everybody like these motherfuckers crazy, but that is that's, yeah, it's that's part it. of it. It's part of it. So yeah. it's like, I like you don't want to do that with me, man. So, yeah. I, but that's that's one thing I do. I got that comedic mean shit, man. Hi. 
Can I speak to you for a second about, is the man in the house home? Can I speak to him about Dr. Squatch? Look, guys, I use Dr. Squatch. You happy? I'm not lying. I used it this morning. I believe the pine tar is what I used this morning. When you soap yourself, it runs a little, it's black soap and it runs a little black down your body. So you really feel like you're accomplishing something. It's not like the thing where you just sort of take the soap's word for it for it that it's doing something this it runs a little black so it's a bit it feels like you're really accomplishing something in the shower which it, you can't accomplish that much in the shower other than cleaning yourself and dr swatch proves that you're being cleaned it smells good they all smell good i still have my original block of soaps they're in they the cabinet smells great the shower smells great it's a real nice soap but here's why they're better than traditional soaps they use high performance natural products 98 percent natural OB Corp certified, no harmful ingredients. They'll have you look, smelling, and feeling your best. The sensory experience in the shower and on your skin is great. Like I said, not too chalky, not too moist, and it runs black. Buy three soaps and get three soaps for free. That's $28 in savings, like getting a bar for $4. Offer only valid for new customers. There's free shipping. One of Dr. Squatch's founding missions is to encourage men to pay attention to the ingredients they use on their body. Right now, Dr. Squatch is offering my listeners a huge savings. All new customers will get three free bar soaps plus free shipping with any purchase of three bars. Just go to Dr. Squatch slash N-E-A-L to receive this buy three, get three offer. That's D-R-S-Q-U-A-T-C-H dot C-O-M slash N-E-A-L to receive this buy three, get three offer. It's time to get all the daily routine essentials you'll need to start feeling good and smelling like a man today. <laughs> man. They well, like. the other thing I was thinking when you, when you said being in a relationship with a comedian, it's like, we have big egos mm. and we kind of think we should be talking most of the time. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> like I well, meaning there's that thing of like writing as somebody else is talking mm. or thinking and be like, you know what I'm gonna say. And not even like slam, just kind of like responding. Well, that's what I do wrong because then I do that and I'm a cut off. Cause if I think I know what you're about to say, I gotta stop it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear this. I know what you're about to say. I don't mm -hmm. even want to hear it. I already wrote it. Like, I know yeah. what you're about to say. You don't know what I'm about to say. And then they say the shit you thought it was, I see it. you said it. Like, yeah. And that's a, that's a crazy, that's a crazy thing to do too. But I had to learn to stop doing that. And like, what I love about Danella, we have, once again, we have very honest conversations. If it's a problem with something, if it's whatever, we, we, even with her, cause she would get really mad. Like me and her dad was talking for like two and a half hours. Cause I, I did get his blessing. And we was talking about her. Two and a half hours. Man, old black man. Did you have was. to talk him into it? No, he just wanted to fucking talk. He got, he was, he just, so like they just lost, uh, he lost his wife. She lost her mom. Just literally just passed away maybe a couple weeks ago. And so everybody's in this yeah. space and me and him talk. I mean, I, don't, I told you I'm like, a, I'm like a young old black man. So yeah. like they, we literally talked. He was, t he told me way more than I, I just wanted this blessing. <laughs> Like, yo, you know you could just add like I was and yo, somebody like man. I'm doing all types. I just want the blessing, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to get blessed to get the fuck out of here. So, so me and Sandy, her mama, when we got married, like man, I, don't, I had all the ladies. Like, <laughs> the fuck, man. Uh, but, but it was so crazy. Oh, I, like man. I learned a lot about your fucking. Yeah. I almost like because I was trying to surprise her with the proposal. I almost told her myself because I wanted to tell her about this conversation with her fucking oh, that's dad. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Like man, he had all types of shit to say. Uh, but yeah, you know, it, it's, it's cause she has a main street too, but like, I don't care though. I remember the first thing, she's the first woman I've ever said, Hey, I hear you. I know you're mad, but I ain't going nowhere. So you can pout all you want to, but I'm, I'm here. And I've never said that before. Okay. Did you mean it like I'm committed to you or did you mean it like you're not going to scare me away? How do you mean both, it? Both ways. You're not going to scare me away, and also you, she thought she was pouting to scare you away, yeah, or you she know, was pouting to get her well for you to change your mind about something. Well, two things. It's either that, or I mean, Mary talked about this. You know, one of the things she said. You know, she learned from me. She was like, "Mr. Rail, you stretching me." <laughs> that's what she said. All the time. Um, it's because that's a defense mechanism for some people. I, I think I was doing the same thing. You almost break. You try to break up the thing before you yeah. feel like you're going to get really hurt. So you keep self-sabotaging shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I was watching her do that and I was like, well, I hear you, but I'm not going nowhere. Whatever you saying ain't enough for us to be in this space of you being this angry. That's, yeah. that's not enough. I don't know. So I ain't going nowhere. So it was, like you said, it was it's both versions of it. Like, hey, 
whatever. This ain't a big a big deal, but also, I, but I, for me, it was like I knew she was the one. I knew I was gonna propose to her probably like a couple months after us, after we were dating. I knew she was gonna be my wife, and um, but I wasn't in no rush. But I knew it. That's why I was like, I ain't going. Nowhere. I just never met nobody like her before. I never felt. I felt seen with her. I remember uh, <laughs> I was shooting a movie, and me and a co-star had got into it. Ugh, such a dick. <laughs> and I left. I was like, yo, I need a break. I went to New York to see Gerard host SNL. I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> and the studio called me like, hey, man, we need you. To, we changed the schedule. We need you to come back. I'm like, I'm not coming back. First of all, yeah, I got to yeah, work with this asshole who keep changing shit. And, you know, they was like threatening maybe to sue me and all types of shit. And I was like, whatever, man. I, you know, I stood my ground. I was very strong or whatever. And then I hung up the phone. I was like, what the fuck did I just do? They about to kick my black ass out of Hollywood, right? <laughs> this is it for me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I remember getting emotional about it. And, and she was there. And what I respected about it was she didn't, she didn't say anything. She just rubbed my back. And I like, once again, I told you I make crab legs. So she orders yep. crab legs. You know, I like crab sure, legs. Sure, 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 sure. And just ordered that for lunch for me. And But what I love was, and I felt very vulnerable. And I've been in a situation where I've dated other women before. If they saw me emotional, they didn't know what to do with that shit. Right? Mm -hmm. They're like, ooh. And she didn't do any of that. She was, she was just let me be in that space. And, you know, once I got out of it, she's like, well, everything's going to be okay. And it was just that casual. It wasn't like, be a man and you know, man up and all this other shit. It was just like, it's cool. How did you handle the Hollywood shit? That that particular one? It would, It went my way. They they was just overdoing it. They, they knew I had a, I wasn't wrong about anything. Yeah. And they knew how tough the environment has been too, right? And I needed that shit to finish that fucking movie. And uh, everything worked itself out. I got a Great. chance to see Gerard Kill, you know, uh, hosting SNL and... Now, and that was a great moment because I wanted to be there for my friend yeah. too. You know, everything was still happening in his world, and uh, that was very important to me. That's still important to me. That's once again, that's somebody who, you know, once again when they set me down, that was even more like that made us even more brothers. Like, yo, yeah. now we bro, we like tied at the hip. So I got your back no matter what's going on or if you need my support. So even with that, like, you know, that's a part of therapy too. Like, even I, that was a session about my friends. Like, you know, when especially when Gerard Gerard came out as gay, what? <laughs> you stupid <laughs> and uh <laughs> it was so but it was like it was other comics talking shit and it, that bothered me so much like like oh he's getting all this stuff now because he said oh he's right gay. yeah that's always like uh it's like yeah. get the fuck out of it yeah but gerard so far gerard's like i was really successful when everybody thought i was straight yeah <laughs> i was still doing better than most of you yeah, yeah. <laughs> when i was straight yeah so now I was the like, gay thing helped <laughs> but it wasn't he was already doing good <laughs> you know it's just it, it's just being honest and I, I had a girl accuse me of Dr me and Gerard being gay 11 years ago for real she a girl I was dating was like you're you and him are having a relationship I was like he's not I'm I'm still straight and so is he <laughs> I still haven't come out um <laughs> <laughs> he finally came out. He finally gave up the ghost a year and a half ago, but I'm uh, from my cold, dead hands. So you've been a more dedicated, like you're not sort of getting bucked off the Bronco, so to speak. You're not like she, you, you're, you're able to like commit yeah, I'm good. and stay in it. Yeah. And it, you know, the thing with relationships is it, you have to feel lucky, not lucky. Mm. Like I'm so lucky, but like literally self-interested. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, this is like a thing. No one I get that no that other people don't get, and kind of be selfish about it. I it, don't. It's your own selfish world. Like it, it doesn't. We sh we don't have to involve nobody else in how we doing it. Yeah, it's nobody's fucking business. Yeah, and so like I, I think when I was married the first time, we didn't move. Like we took so much advice from so many. Mm -hmm. We was like the young couple. Everybody wanted to see work, so everybody have all this shit to tell us. And if we didn't do it this way, and that fucked with us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And so, I know, once again, that was part of the conversation I had with my ex wife. We we talked about that. Uh, in this relationship, this is it's not that. This is us. Yeah. And I don't give a fuck what nobody else thinks. Yeah. I only care about how you feel and how you think. And I feel more mature in that space too with her. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel way more mature. And I mean, I got three kids. She has four daughters. You know, it's a total of seven kids, which I love. I weirdly enough, I always wanted a big family. I don't know yeah. why, but I have. It's part of the old, the old, the OG kit. The OG and watching shows like Eight is Enough and yep. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, sure.
That's <laughs> such a cringe. No, it's a tra- I'm, I remember. Courtship of Eddie's father. Come on. Um, <laughs> All right, and then so what have you you've been you've tried to aspire to be a better uh, partner and mm-hmm. have been? Do you feel sort of settled more than nor- than you have been in the past? Not settled in a negative way, but just no, like I've, secure, I, yes, stable. I feel very stable. Um, and it's crazy you start learning like this is the second half of my life, so it's like it just I'm excited about it because it's going to be totally different than this this first time. So. Um, I feel stable. I feel happy. Um, and that you know, you always seemed happy. You know, you have like a you have good, you have sunny energy. I've had good energy, but then I didn't realize. Once again, when I went to therapy, I didn't realize those moments where I was depressed. I had no idea that I was. What did you think it was? I I don't know. I'm like, are these just thoughts, maybe, or Mm -hmm. whatever? I thought like, no, oh shit, I was depressed. Like I could look at certain projects. And be like, damn, I was fucking depressed at that time. I ain't know it, but yeah. I can see that shit. Yeah. Like I can see now. Your like, skin hangs different. That it, it's it, it's it really just, it it's really on you. it's it's on you. Yeah. And you can literally see I can see it in other people. I remember there's some real shit. I remember watching Mike one of Mike Epps' old specials, and I can tell when he was just in his worst time. And then I saw one of his newest specials and he was fucking glowing because he was fucking happy. And I'm like, oh shit. That's what that looks like. And I can yeah. see that literally with myself. Like it is literally projects where I'm like, ooh, yeah, I wasn't, nobody knows it, but I was going through it. You know, I yeah. watch a movie like Get Out and even though it was a big deal to me, sometimes I look at it and I'm like, nah, I wasn't in a great headspace, but I was able to perform. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But I wasn't in the best place. And like, you know. How do you think white people felt watching it? <laughs> <laughs> what about us, bro? You put us in a bad space. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. I do comedy. Um, and do you? Uh, oh well, no, that's interesting because last time I spoke to you in depth like this was for that Jay Z thing, and we yep. were talking about white people in general. Mm. Where are you with white people? Because I thought you didn't really you like you didn't really get too upset by racial shit and it, it was the opposite was true yeah i, I it's tough man because i have my favorite white people like uh sure one of my favorite white people besides josh rabinowitz is uh ryan reynolds to like speak to and man text he called me when we was in quarantine you know when everything was going down with george floyd yeah and we had a really honest conversation he called to check on me and I was very in my militant shit. So I'm like, yeah, you, y'all can do way more shit. You know, and yeah. I was just telling him stuff. And man, to see him actually go through with a lot of stuff, I was like, oh shit. You're yeah. bad, but he's Canadian, so. Sure. He doesn't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but it, it, I mean, because uh, I've worked with and met some and I'm cool. Like John Cena's really dope. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? He's a person who loves people. We had, we, we, when we did Vacation Friends too, we was able to have some very deep conversations because we were just all in the same resort and shit. So, where did you guys shoot? In Hawaii. I was there when you were shooting because I saw Cena at the, at the, at the hotel. Wow. And I didn't know yep. that you. I didn't know your guys were like shooting shit. Yeah, shit. We I would said hi. We were fucking shooting that damn, and we but we talked a lot. Like and that was yeah. cool, you know. And uh, but I I do feel like because now we're in this weird place with, which is what I love about I love about your humor and your specials and your honesty and that shit. But like white people who like felt bad for shit, and then now shit for feel, a while feels normal now. Uh huh. And now it's back to the which, Wait, now. Where were we? Yeah, yeah basically yeah yeah and so like you know even with the even with the strike that's happening it's like yeah we go try to get all this stuff but like black people still fighting for certain things it's like okay cool so can we have another conversation about this shit yeah <laughs> all right final two questions so you've been to, the things you've done that really helped yourself m- mental health lives therapy huge mm-hmm. quit drinking for a little bit your skin came back um <laughs> Uh, and anything we didn't talk about? I mean, we pretty much we we hit everything. I mean, you you asked me a question. I don't even know if I answered it. Like as far as like, I don't know if you said ask me therapy or what. Like when it comes to parenting, did it like? Yeah, because it it has made me a better parent, and I've been able to tell them that it's okay. Like yo, and they can start young. Like let me know whenever you want to you want to go to therapy. You should go. You can start going now, and then like having my my six year old. 
uh, is autistic. So that's been different. I had, I've had to learn a lot of patience with him. And like, I started seeing, like, you know, people look at autism a certain way. I think uh, people who have autism are like way smarter than everybody else. Like, I think they- In some ways they are. They They're like sit optimized their own. for one thing. Yeah. yeah. It, and I think there's it's something brilliant about that. And I, I love that. I remember Danella's older daughter, she would like, um, he, sometimes uh, Harlem would just lay on the floor and she would just lay down with him and just be a part of his world. And I, that actually made it everything better for me. Like, oh, that's what it is. We're, we're trying to make, him be a part of this yeah. shit when I really I should be just sitting in your world with you. Yeah. And that'll help me figure you out a lot better. And so, you know, that's, and that's been fun. It's, it's actually like him, he he glues the family together. Cause every You're a six year old. Yeah. Cause everybody has to, he's an athletic kid too. So he just be doing all type, he'll jump off anything. You know what I mean? So you gotta watch him do all type of shit. Uh, but yeah, everybody has to participate with just loving him and listening and observing and uh, I don't know. And that, once again, I like, and that's what I'm saying. Like I'm in this cool place of like, nothing's perfect cause life gone life. <laughs> yeah. But I'm enjoying the way I live life. Like sometimes I get up in the morning and like, you know, I, I love basketball and I, I got a basketball court at my house now. And I, I just by myself just getting shots up. Cause I was doing it all the time when I was a kid. Like that's yeah. all I did was hoop. I would go to yeah. the park all the time. And like yeah. now to do it now as an adult and just, and it's so calming. So I'm finding the calmness in so many small things. I don't care if it's me sitting there watching a the whole series yeah, and talking to myself at the word like, ooh, the Star Wars series, great. You know what I mean? Like just, yeah. <laughs> just, it's just, I just been sitting in my own world. Even just the stuff I've been writing lately. It's been just like, it's just, I'm, which is I'm excited about too, because I think it's bleeding into even just some of the newer roles I'm taking and things like that. Like I'm excited, I'm taking on more dad roles and stuff, you know, because you know that's where I'm at. I want to fucking yeah. Steve Martin it up, like yeah, he was he be one of the father of the brides. Yep, <laughs> yeah. I'm in a cool place, and it's like being on tour again, and it's so crazy. This is the first time I've toured in a while. This first time comedy's been it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, you yeah. know what I mean? Like for a long time, where like I'm like, wait a minute, comedy is just it now again. Yeah, that's all I got. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and being on the road now is so different. Like I'm like way more mature. Like I get up, I go, I get, a, I go work out, I get a massage on the Saturdays before the yep. Saturdays. Like it's just a different grown yeah. yes. version of how yeah. I used to be You're on like, the road. Try to eat correctly. Yeah. Just like what kind of garbage is around? Can I walk to? Yeah. It's just, it's so crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, I don't know. I'm in a, I'm in a cool place, man. And just now that, you know, after I proposed to her and, and she said she felt this too, but it felt like a weight was lifted mm. because we decided to commit for real, for real. You could talk about that shit, but when you like, nah, let's do it. I mean, she been smiling every single, she ain't, she ain't cursed me out of nothing. She been like, Dang. she been cool. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um, and then what if okay, here's the other question is what is your dream for yourself? What is your like ultimate dream for yourself? So that was a two parter. Uh <laughs> hit it. To be a minority owner of a basketball team. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> like, like that's a real yeah. It's like a real thing to me. To the point where like Hopefully, I, and I'm gonna uh, see if I can do that. I may invest into a WNBA team first, correct? Because I watch, I love basketball. Yeah, like, whoever I, I'll go watch some three olds play. I, <laughs> yeah, I love basketball. Uh, but yeah, I really that's something I really want to do. Actually, so so random, but like, I mean, it takes minimum twenty million yeah. to be a minority owner. I know, but that's why I gotta. Yeah, I gotta turn it up. Shit. Great, see Martin it up, um, <laughs> and. <laughs> And then what's your emotional goal for yourself? My emotional goal for myself is to, well, you know, so I tie this into the wedding. Whenever we do it uh, that day or whatever, I want to be able to really, really just take it, like for real, take it all in and, and, and experience what the moment really is. Like for real, be like, yo, this is me marrying my best friend. Or oh, I'm about to like I I'm excited about this might sound crazy, but I'm excited about taking care of her and and her daughters and like I'm excited about that. You know, I'm excited about Are you generally nurturing like that? Yeah. 
So you do get excited about taking care of somebody. Yeah. I, I like, I love that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a all the way provider. I like, I enjoy that shit. Like for real, for real. Like I'm like, I, you know, I'm I'm that type of dad. I realize I'm the dad that just be sitting there like, hey, everything good? You know, you watching everybody have a good time? That yeah. makes me fucking happy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when all the kids are together and they just fucking, they at the pool, they having fun. I like to just sit there and watch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, I did that shit. And so. Hey, with, left, your, with your gray left. beard and your toothpick. Hey, brother. And that, <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once again, eating, I'm, eating I'm, not a, links. I'm not offended. I'm not offended at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, know, look at me, look at this, look, this, this is, is who you this, are, this, this yeah. is a short set, all this, you all this is on brand. You should have gone with this full set. If you gone full block green, that would have really sold it, no, but this, but you got it, no, it's, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. No, very, oh yeah, and the hat, you know what? I didn't give the crap, the hat, the sock, fuck, fuck. <laughs> what an oversight. <laughs> um, yeah, that makes, so So that's your, your goal is the emotional wellness of the people around you. The emotional wellness and me to literally taking all the moments. I'm talking about for everything. Like I had to learn that even with like movies I have coming out and stuff, like just embrace it. Yeah. I think sometimes everything felt like always work. And now I'm like, I just been enjoying myself. Yeah. You know and I'm stressing saying? over it and how's it being received. Yeah. yeah. It's like, wow. dude, you're a movie star. Like that's a, a that's a it's a one in a billion. I mean, one in five hundred million people. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's a it's it's one of I I tell you real quick. Uh, and I remember during quarantine, I had a moment where like I was watching TV and I had like three things. I had like a, two movies and a show, just all on at the same time. And I remember like and this is something I learned in therapy is, t is talking to little kid me. And I remember like talking to little kid me like, oh shit, you made it inside the, the yeah the TV like this thing that you admired that took you away from your world. That gave you joy. You actually are inside that motherfucker now. Yeah, and that's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> it's it's so insane. It's hard to even appreciate because mm -hmm. it's so. It's like how many comedians are there in the world? Out of eight billion people, even having comedy specials is is especially if you love this shit and you're a yeah. fan. You like fuck. I'm a it's not comprehend. It's another thing that's not comprehensible. I counted one time how many people have specials on Netflix, mm. and it let's include HBO. It's about two hundred people mm. in kind of the history. Maybe it's over. Maybe it's two fifty. But out of eight billion people, I, I, what do you, it's hard to even know what to do with it. But like, it's it's saw, incredible ever, fortune. You ever scrolls like I go to HBO sometimes and I look at the other specials. It's like oh my special bigger and blacker or yep. this, or like that's yep. fucking crazy yeah. to me. Yes, it's insane. <laughs> yes, it's totally insane. We're incredibly fortunate. All right, great talking to you, buddy. Good to see you, man. Thanks for having me. Congrats on the outfit. <laughs> <laughs>